Oh, I think it just popped. I don't know what to do. That's yours, Steve. That untitled. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just bringing it down so we can see it. No? Yeah. Oops. You got those headphones plugged into anything? Yeah. Well, I yeah. had uh, set it up so that I could hear through this, but uh, I'll try here. But it's not, it's not picking up. I know that much. Presenter view because I've got notes. <laughs> Is it time? Oh, that's you good. betcha. You betcha. Okay. So welcome everybody. Thirteen. <laughs> yeah, thirteen. Somebody has to leave. I hope we've got a few <laughs> more online at, at, uh, watching us from home. But it is a bitter night out, so I don't blame some people for not coming. Test, test, test. We're not, we're not getting through? Well, I can hear myself on this microphone. The microphone works, but it's not sending any But it's sound. not coming through the software yet. Oh, well, that's too bad. Dan will keep we working want on to it. sign. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a sign for you, but it ain't polite. <laughs> I don't use that sign. Okay, here's our agenda. Left turn. Like. So, um, I don't think we have any first-time attendees, do we? I think I recognize everybody's face. But this just came through, um, I think it was on the eWeekly this past weekend. If you want to try out my heritage, there's a library edition, it's $10. You buy it on the OGS eStore, and it's a benefit for the members. So, it's worth um, worth trying. You can't download it in the log no. or link it to your things. I you guess. can't link it to. Uh, you can't build a tree. You can't link it to a tree. You can download the images to your computer. Oh, that's useful. So it's it's more um, it's more trying it out to see if you really like it. Of course, I bought. I got. very much but anyway does this last for a specific period of time one assumes it's for a year I think I read that. I one assumes that <laughs> um, for a year. no I don't have it on, on my notes here another thing that was in that um, that e-weekly is they want they're wanting pictures of churches which I think is a darn good idea. It's sort of a complementary database to our places of worship projects. This is really loud. Not out there? Oh, okay. I almost feel like I'm getting an echo myself. I think it's your speakers read about you. Oh, the speakers read down here. Oh, okay. This is help? Anne's little portable one. Did that help? That, no. But yeah. anyway, thank you for trying. It's not aimed at you. <laughs> anyway, if you do have uh, either new or, or old or old postcard. That's what I was going to ask, yeah. Church stuff. All you'd have to do is scan it. You upload the file. And um, I was playing around on the OGS website, of course, to try and find it. And it's the ogs.on.ca slash church hyphen locator is the database it's going to go into and it's already got 58 pictures which is kind of interesting uh, Nancy uh, several years ago when we were working on the schools project yes you did uh, a lot didn't uh, you um, I went around uh, I can't think of his name right now 
Ken. With Ken, yes. And while we were taking pictures of schools, we passed any churches, we took pictures of them too. But I don't know the names of those churches. If I well, if you know, <laughs> were, they, were they GPS linked, tagged? Probably I've got a list somewhere. <laughs> But uh, I, I might have to bring in the pictures and people can say, oh yeah, that's such and such a church. Because well, we never did anything with the church pictures. We no. were just but if they it. were digital files, yes. and they were taken like on a cell phone that does geotagging. No. No. no, camera that doesn't do no. geotagging. No, this was some years ago and it yeah. was an old camera I have to have. That well, we'll gave just me. have to go around <laughs> and find them all again. Yeah. Probably we'll be able to identify some of them out of the Places of Worship project. Yeah. Yes, sir. Is this um, for churches still in use or for buildings that may not be churches anymore? I think it's for all because the preamble of this thing was that there's with so many churches closing and being sold off, we needed to get a record of them, you know, what they were. Um, so, I mean, that that actually can go back to the very beginning of Ontario. So, um, second, second point, Heritage Ontario on the website has a section for churches. Oh, that's a good point. Maybe we can identify Anne's with that. <laughs> and they have photos and descriptions, histories of the churches. Yeah. And that will help our places of worship. Well, we'll have to cross-reference everything. That'll be good. As long as I don't have to do it. Okay. The OGS webinars. There's going to be two before we meet in February. So the first one is going to fit in really well with today's theme, which is breaking down brick walls. So um, here's the blurb on Thomas McKenzie. Did I get everything creating a checklist for research? And so many genealogists think they have a brick wall when in fact they just haven't done an exhaustive, exhaustive <laughs> search. And uh, he's assembling a research checklist to take your genealogy to the next level. And you'll learn how to identify gaps in the research. And this presentation is going to be modified to include Canadian sources, which is important because a lot of the webinars we get, of course, are very American-based. And the second one in February, February 1st, for Black History Month, we have Janice Lovelace, who's going to be talking about the 100,000 blacks who left the U.S. after the revolution and uh, settled in Canada. So who were they? Why did they fight with Britain on Britain's side? What happened to them? And learn how to research them. Well, I know regular loyalists aren't that easy to research. It'll be interesting to see if the black loyalists are even worse. <laughs> Voice of uh, experience back there. And just on a note, June 23rd, mark your calendars now, that's going to be our next day of learning. Um, moment we're looking at topics like DNA and maybe using the other big websites, not Ancestry, using Find My Past and My Heritage. So keep that day free. Now, this was on Genealogy Gems blog. Um, starting last, about two or three weeks ago, uh, Family Search is now actively trying to get people to actually sign in. The account is free, but there are benefits to signing in. And these are the three, these are the three that they quoted in the Genealogy Gems write-up. Apparently there are microfilm records that have been digitized that we can't access unless we're actually signed in. I hadn't realized that. Oh, yeah. And there's some you still can't get unless you go to a family history center. 
Yes. <laughs> and it all depends upon the partner who gave permission for the, the microfilming. If they put conditions on it, that's what this is. This is how they're going to enforce a certain level of, of privacy concern. Uh, customized help. So if you're signed in, you can get one-on-one -on -one email assistance through the website. You also can get customized alerts and you can get a dashboard with reminders of record hints awaiting your review, where you left off in your last search, and tips on what to do next. Now I haven't experienced this yet, but I thought that was neat and I have I have it on my list to do. Go in and check that out. And the third one they mentioned is the global family tree, which if you've put any uh, of your family up on uh, Family Search website, it's a mixed blessing. Okay? On the con side is somebody will go in and add something, and you know darn well it's not that family. You know, they put a New York State census on someone who never left Ontario in their whole life. So it can be a bit of tug, and tug of war. But on the other hand, uh, if you get other people putting on research, it, they may show hints to something you've never checked out. So mixed blessing. I actually kind of stopped when my three times, four times great-grandmother was listed in the New York census, and I know darn well she never left Lanark County in her life. <laughs> so now we're going to go into our panel and audience participation, breaking down brick walls. But before we start, I pulled together a few hints, you know, dug around the internet and pulled a few things together. So bear with me. I'm not going to go into these in depth, but. They are things to consider when you're hitting a roadblock. So ask your relatives. You'd be surprised where you'll find the family Bible. Okay? It can be in the possession of a cousin who's younger than you. I had that happen to me because it came down a different branch of the family. Uh, they might have certificates. Certainly they'll have certificates of their line, which you may not have. Uh, don't forget the neighbors and the close family friends because they can probably tell you a lot about the family. Secret stuff. Going to other genealogists here, we're talking about going on social media like Facebook. We've got a Facebook uh, group and people are asking questions about Durham region research all the time and getting answers from each other. I don't think we're doing we're doing some of it, but not a lot of it. It's a very much a help each other. And many blogs have lots of tips and advice. Now checking your sources. Did you find the original or did you just take the stuff out of an index? Because if you did, go back and find the original because there's going to be a lot more information. And even if you did get the original, did you look at everything on that thing or did you just find a name and date, plunk it into your family tree and move on? Because there may be other information on that certificate that you missed. Did you enter it correctly? If your genealogy software report has error reports, run it. Because that's how you're going to find out somebody died before they were born because your fingers got jumbled up. And also check your conclusions. Sometimes you have a piece of information you picked up three years later that totally changes the conclusion you had made in the, in the first place. Or sometimes you jump to a conclusion before you've really gathered all the facts. Because you're in a rush. Okay? And all you have to do is look at some of those ancestry trees. <laughs> you know, they've got people married to their grandparents and oh, all sorts of interesting things. Organizing, you need to be organized. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, that's my downfall too. 
You have to have your details. You have to know what you checked and where you found the information, what you actually searched on, because maybe you didn't search on something that you found later in another source and you need to go back. Spelling variations, boy, those clerks could be really creative. Oh man, I've seen some Lulus. M-I-K-L-E. Michael. Did you search on M-I-K-L-E? Probably not. Did you? And, and Ancestry, you got to put in the first three letters, M-I-C star. That's not going to work. Doesn't that be the first three? It's it can be the last? three total. Yes. With the first, in the first initial and then two others. But you can I, use the asterisk in between or whatever. I was reading something recently and I thought it said you had to have the first three or the last three. I do it a different way all the time. Do you? Yeah. Well, play with it at any rate. And sometimes it's better to search without a name. Without a first name, but list the parents' names and get a list of the children. Maybe there's some children you never even knew about. Search, I was having trouble with McClellan's in Renfrew County. Well, they stuck an extra C in there. And in, in another one, they, they, they put a space after the MC. So I just did first name, birth date, location. And when I had ended up with like three pages that I had to go through. But I found them. Uh, checking out research guides. Maybe you're stuck because you don't know what research is like in that, that area or that state or that country. Check, it's, check the Family Search Wiki. They've got great research guides. And something someone really has emphasized for me. Write it down. Start writing it like a mini biography and you'll be amazed at what gaps and holes you'll see. And it shows the gaps in your research. And that's another place where timelines can really help. If you start writing down all the things you know about the person by chronological date, maybe you'll find out that there's another wife in there somewhere. <laughs> Get a DNA test. This is me. <laughs> Connect with your distant cousins. There are so many stories out there now about people reconnecting branches of families just because they used a DNA service. Another thing you need to do is ask yourself, could they have lied? Why did they lie? Why would someone lie on this type of record? Maybe it's a military registration and the birth date isn't quite the one you have. There's probably a reason, because he really wanted to go to war, so he said he was 18 instead of being 16. That happened my, my dad's air crew. His tail gunner turned 18 when the war ended. He lied. Could it be the other way too? They didn't want to go to war, so they said they were 16 when they were 18? Yeah. I'm sure it's there. <laughs> would, they, would they have kept that a, a record though? Would they have what? Like the people filling out that military application form. Oh. Would it have been kept or would they have tossed it? Yeah. It's hard to know. It, the other end too, you know, you're over 45, maybe you say you're 40. Pardon? Yeah, someone who on the enlistment said he was five years younger than what he was it, in order to get back into... Because otherwise he would have been 40 years younger. Yeah. So, and the very, don't forget, uh, education. Go to webinars, conferences, make connections, ask questions, ask the lecturers questions, find out about new strategies, find out about new databases. That's always helpful. And hiring a professional is an option to consider because in theory, they have more experience in one particular area and could find you more information. And that's it. 
Now we'll move on to the actual breaking down brick walls. Steve, how, how do you want to handle this? Will we turn some chairs around here and? Well, sure, we'll, we can we'll just bring up the table there. Oh, okay. If you want, throw three chairs behind you. Sure. Is that good? Yeah. Is that, let me still give you sound, Dan? I'm sure you're close enough, yes. Okay. I mean, we can bring the microphone down to the seat. I should have brought the table stand. <laughs> I didn't think of that. Oh, great. <laughs> this, this condenser mic's pretty good, though. So who else is going to be an expert? <laughs> Bob, come on up. I'm not an expert. <laughs> well, I don't feel like I'm an expert either. We're all amateur experts. If you're I'm not sorry. an expert, I'm an expert amateur. So. I think it's for what? Well, I can hear you better if you sit up there. <laughs> <laughs> if you do have anything to say. legible is it it's, uh, Joan couldn't make it tonight but she sent us this copy of, the, of Western Library's Insider magazine uh, this is the front page and apparently there's a new pro map project out there it runs from about 1906 to 1977 they're digitizing maps and almost 1100 maps at this uh, website it's three different uh, universities doing it I believe and the project website <coughs> is right here, and I can't wait to read it. O C U L, I think. Okay, hold on. Let me just. It was a test, and I failed. <laughs> you read it out. Mm, it looked blurrier now than it was. <laughs> How did that happen? It got smaller. <laughs> oh, okay. Dan's trying to focus. It, it. it won't go any bigger. <laughs> Well, you can probably pull it up in your mail if you want. Uh, if Nancy yes. puts it in full frame, it might be readable, but she's going to... Well, I'm trying to type it into oh. beside it. <laughs> well, it's going to disappear <laughs> pretty quick anyway. We, we'll try and come up with it from Nancy's email later on, maybe. Uh, but just to, to let you know, there is something out there. And like I say, unfortunately, it's not near as clear as I was hoping. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, there topo we go. maps, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> topo maps, T-O-P-O-M-A-P-S. Okay, now that I've totally ruined this. <laughs> now it's shrunk. <laughs> So Deb and I both made one up, Oops, whoops. and then we've copied some of the emails that we've done research on. But we will take uh, brick walls from the audience as well to make so that we can all see what we can do. This is for No, this one right now. 
this is mine. This is my brick wall. It's, I've had her for 30 years. She's been a brick wall. I know. <laughs> she does look good, doesn't she? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's a cutie by the end. Is that a brick wall behind her? Yeah. <laughs> and she got hit with one. She's <laughs> not a real happy camper. So she was born about 1801 in England and died in 1865 in Canada West. And I know she where she was married, 1823 in Wadworth by Doncaster, West Riding in Yorkshire. She married George Wood. There are no other Coltons listed in Wadworth Parish, uh, at least not during that time period. I have been through the parish register. I do have some clues about her. Uh, the adjacent parish of Loversall does have some Colton families, but not an Isabella and Rebecca. Um, and when Isabella's daughter died in 1827, she was the eldest daughter, I believe, they interred her in the Leversall Parish Churchyard, even though they were still living in Wadworth. So I'm wondering if Isabella had gone home with a sick baby to have her mother or relatives help to look after her because George was from further away so his family wouldn't be quite as helpful or if they just wanted to bury her in a family plot in Lover's Home. That's one of the theories I have. The Coltons of Lover's Home, uh, not too many of them. The children of James and Ann Colton and the most prolific one seems to be a Joseph Colton first married to Jane, she dies 1776, and he has uh, five, four children with her. Then marries, secondly, a Rebecca Palin. Now, there's the Rebecca name, so I'm wondering if there's part of my connection. Uh, I don't know as much about Rebecca. They married in 1777, and they had a William and Charlotte. And uh, Joseph probably died in June 1786. He was a blacksmith. He probably died in the parish of Autry. I have a little map coming up. We'll show you where that is. No, but there is a, either a second Joseph or the same Joseph marrying a third time, but the time sequence does not quite fit. So that's why I call him a second Joseph. Um, he has a couple of children there. William is the only one. William is the only one that I can really trace down to any extent at all. This Joseph probably died January 1787 in Leversall. He was also a blacksmith. And there's two death, two death dates for two, two Josephs, so I'm thinking that there was the two of them. That's another reason I think there's two of them. The family of James and Anne, which was Joseph's parents, there's some of the other names there. Not much help. Most of them I could not follow down, other than I know Francis had a son of Francis, also in Bottry. So Bottry and Loversall keep popping up with this Colton family. Onomastics? Is that how you say it? Sounds good to me. <laughs> I'm throwing out these fancy words that I don't know how to say. Um, as you can see, find it. Well, it's the study of the names and how they relate. I guess something along that line. Genealogy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so in this case, I'm trying to tie how some to George and some to Isabella and Rebecca. That's the name of their children. But because most of the names are so commonplace, I can tie most of them to George Wood and his ancestry and relatives. But I can also throw quite a few of them at the Coltons of Lumbershall too, so it's not really helpful. The only two that stand out a bit are Henry, which does not appear in either name, in either branch, and then Elizabeth. So whether or not that's a clue, I don't know. There's not enough to go on for that. But at least I did work that angle trying to see if that would be of any help. There are the different locations. There is Lubbersall there, it doesn't show too well because it's kind of stretched up along there. There's Wadworth, it's a much bigger parish, and then Bottry's just down here. You can also see I got to worry about Lincolnshire and Nottinghamshire because they 
Nottingham curves right up close to it. It touches Wadworth practically. And uh, Lincoln kind of almost on the same the other side. So everything, uh, I, I have several places, potential places to research for that. It's been a pain. <laughs> I have some possible Colton entries. None say Isabella Rebecca. There's no Isabellas out there in that time period at all that I can find that have been indexed. But I do have uh, four or five Rebecca's there. None of them stand out. Uh, the, uh, and none of them were in Yorkshire. So whether or not they are of any super, oh, I shouldn't say that. There was one in Yorkshire at the bottom, sorry. And, and <laughs> the, uh, somebody typed it wrong, but I just typed it as is. Rubicle. Yeah. But uh, that is a few possibilities they have. And like I say, they are not really consistent with anything. I know they're not even consistent with names that could be from the uh, Lover's Hall um, family. There's the West Riding of Yorkshire in Conjunction with your map. With your map. <laughs> well, the, that is all West Riding kind of in around in that whole circle there. It is West Riding. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Whereas my George Wood, his he comes from a place called Fish Lake Parish, which I believe is just up above Arxy. It came from Arxy previous to that. So but all those. So that's why I don't think he's as liable to. Uh, have helped the family if one of their children were sick. I don't think his family would have come down and helped out as much. So that's why I still feel that the lovers all bunch are, are related, but how? Uh, I've already checked a lot of the surrounding parish registers. I don't believe I've checked the parish chest yet because I don't think it was available at the time. Could be that her parents were of a different religion and that those records are lost and I'd love to find a will for a bunch of Coltons in the area. There is a, a list on the net for some of them and I couldn't find anybody in that but I'm sure that's not all. I can't think of Berwick, not Berwick House, there's a, a special place in Yorkshire you can actually uh, get a handle on. I wonder if she's illegitimate, it's a possibility. Since there isn't a lot of information on her out there, but I, I don't know. Or was she named after her, her grandmother, Rebecca Palin? Possibility. What suggestions does anybody else have? So were you thinking of the Borthwick? Borthwick, thank you. Yes, that's York? it. That's what I'm yeah. Yeah. Some of that is indexed online, just the index, but I did not find my Colton's in there. How, how old was the baby that died? Just a couple of years. A couple of years. So could have moved there, wasn't necessarily born. Well, they, they all the children were, I believe, baptized in Wadworth Parish. Oh, okay. So, but to, when she died, she was buried in Lumberson. Yeah. So, again, okay. not very far away, but. Yeah. If I was thinking of it, if she, if she bought, died a month old. Then oh, yes. a no, no, I think she, she was the first one, and I think we went the very new 23, so she was born in 24 or something. Yeah, she went back. Oh. She went back. Yeah, I can't quite remember off the top of my head. <laughs> 23, yeah. Or he just went too far. Back or yeah. the rear, there's the marriage, yeah, 23. And the baby was, oh, buried in 27. So there is a, a four-year gap in there, but I believe she was the eldest, so I think she was born in 24 or so. Mm. Was there occupational migrations into that area? He was just a laborer, so I honestly, no, no, that's the, the Coltons. Uh, the yes, the Coltons. Coltons. <coughs> the Coltons. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the woods were just laborers. And but they might have like if there was an employment opportunity, they might have went with, the, she might have went with a, a brother or whatever, 
and a brother came for employment there. What, is, is there any, you know, is there mines there, or is there anything in particular I that you can trace? Honest, I haven't checked deeply into it. Yeah. I was following up on the blacksmith angle, but not so much anything else. Yeah. <coughs> Very record that does not give any specific no. students. Bachelor Spinster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what all he said. And have you um, tried have you tried a local family history society in the area? I did the long years and years ago, not recently. Mm -hmm. I did put a query I did put a query in there. Query yeah, yeah. That. But that was a long time. They named yeah. one of their sons Thomas, right? Yes, I believe there was. Okay, well, there was a Thomas in one of the ones, if you go. Yes, there, that's but right. It's not. Uh, do well, do more likely it was, it was, it, well, it could have been the, oh, I have lost where I was. Uh, go for it again. There's a uh, Thomas. Oh, yeah, there's Thomas, Thomas 1733. There. So there okay. was, what's that? There? Yep. Yeah, what did I put And then there was a Thomas that, uh, and George also had, George a had a grandfather, so but that could have been, could have been a, a great uncle or a yeah. grandfather. Yeah. Yes, there is there is could that have, possibility. Not necessarily. No, you're right. It, it actually does apply to both sides. Just a little further back, or could have could have applied to both sides. It's really hard to take pictures when you're at the front. Yeah. <laughs> I'm flexible. Oh, Just okay. say pull that pose. Pull yeah. that pose. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. Steven, do you have any connections with your DNA? I'm ho I have done DNA and, and I'm hoping to, but I don't know for sure. I do have one connection to George and Isabella. But we don't know if it's the wood side or the cold side. And I haven't been able to link anybody else to us yet. So there is that chance. And they're crossing my fingers. <laughs> But that's a that's a good one. That, that I'm hoping the DNA might give us a hint. Like I say, though, even on the Colton siblings, I could hardly trace any of them down at all. So either they moved out of the area and I couldn't follow them, or whatever. Mm -hmm. They're just a little too early for census returns yeah. because they're in the 1770s and so. You looked at surrounding parishes. I did do some, some surrounding mm -hmm. circles. Yes. Again, some of that was done a while back, so probably. Is there a parish clerk project for that area? It, there's some down in the south of England, but I don't know how much. I can't remember off the top of my head. I, I, a lot of it I did get off of the free, free, uh, not the MD, free ridge, which is the parish registers. Yeah. Similar idea to parish clerk. Yeah. And some of your charter is on there, and I did do check, some checking there. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think there, there may or may not be an actual parish clerk project, too. But my problem is, again, they're so close to the border of Nottinghamshire and Lincolnshire, she could be just over the border. Mm -hmm. but Especially with the what you said to Mama Way if she was having a baby out of wedlock. Yes. It would be even worse. <laughs> poor law records. Did anybody in this family end up in, in the poor law? Not that I'm aware of, but this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. tr really stretching yeah. here. Yeah, but that could explain. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, know, she was, you know, she was sent away to have a baby, then maybe she did end up. Um, I presume you've tried to make a wider, some of my bells are Yorkshire, um, but before that they were Norfolk. So sometimes the movements were greater than you would anticipate even for the time period. Mm -hmm. Have you done any general searches of I, records? I believe I have, for instance, on familysearch.org. Yeah. I will just plug in Isabella Rebecca and then the approximate dates in yes. England mm -hmm. and go from there. So I, I have tried that, but. So far, nothing's correct. Either she wasn't baptized, or she was baptized in a different church where the records either have been transcribed or are missing, or et cetera, et cetera. Or she could be one of those Rebecca's sitting up there, and they didn't call her Isabel yeah. <laughs> until later. That's a problem, too. Yeah. 
you've used the maps dot uh, to get your two mile circle and three mile five mile circles but actually yeah, i kind of just used parish map and just a venue and venue i haven't done you <laughs> yeah. okay. same, same idea yeah. Yeah. i assume you've tracked her through her life if any, if any other records you have if she ever went by another name and census records like she comes they came to canada in 1835 so not too about halfway through her kids i guess and uh everything that always calls her isabella as far as you remember not not, not rebecca yeah. so what what religion were they you know methodist the movement methodist. Okay. Yes. Yes. yes yes some of the a couple of kids i believe were in it yes another one here now coincidentally it happens to be for John Wood which I have a quite a few of those but it's not mine it's Debbie's <laughs> uh, actually this come up fairly clear your petitioner is a native of the late province now state of Connecticut and is 45 years of age that he has a wife and seven children and has been 15 years in the province that he now doing duty in the garrison up in York is Kind of how finishes. There's a signature, so you can sort of sort of sign, and there's the date, 1812. And that looks like a petition for land. That is an upper Canada land petition. His second one. There's the known facts about him. Sorry, I don't know what she's here for. Born about 1768 in Connecticut. She married a lady named Kezia or Kai. How do you say Kezia. Okay. I knew I said it differently than other people, but. <laughs> and he arrived in Upper Canada about 1797, according to that last petition. However, he's not on the Elias Smith list of Hope Township settlers, dated the 16th of April, and there's a second date on it, I don't know why, 16th of June, 1799. But his first Upper Canada land petition is dated 19th of December, 1799, in Hope Township. So presumably he came between June and December into that area 
but since he was already in Canada in 1797, he may have been somewhere else for a couple of years. His eldest son, we do not know if this is the eldest child, in fact, it probably isn't, probably there was a daughter before him, but the eldest son was born in Welcome, Hope Township, about 1802. Next son, Noah, born 1803, Hope Township. So he was definitely settled in by that time. And uh, like I said, there's probably a daughter before Jesse. He died in 1813 while serving in the militia in the town of York. And Keziah remarried to Caleb Reed. This is their family based on census. Um, guesses, or the, in brackets, are guesses here of who Debbie feels are represented by these numbers. You can notice that some of the numbers, like two men, one woman, three boys, one girl. So at some stage, they've got some other people living with the family. Is it parents? Is it in-laws? Is it strangers just helping on the farm? Unfortunately, it's not very clear on that. But that is generally the, the layout of the census, so very fortunate to have that. And the seven, this is basically the seven children that Deb believes there were. Uh, Jesse, you can see, 1802 we mentioned. Noah, a, a roughly 1803. And an unknown girl, sometime before 1803, probably ahead of the other two because the census uh, is dated around then. Then there's a David, James Douglas, a Richard, and another son. So she's got about five out of seven there, and there's quite a gap between the two at the end and, and the three at the start, so or three or four, I guess. So there, those are the potential seven children. So. Deb has a few unknowns. Where was John Wood born and to whom? Where was Keziah born and to whom? When and where did they wait? Who were all their children? And of course additional information. And where was the family living from about 1797 to 1799 in Upper Canada? So those are the basic thoughts. considered late loyalists, but so far there's no petitions showing that he ever tried to get in for that reason. Yeah, okay. So is that petition say as a settler or something along that line? Uh, well, uh, 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 yes, as a settler. Yes. Actually, he would have been too young to kind of be a loyalist himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His yeah, father, potentially. Well, and to make it worse, he died in 1813, so he died quite earlier on. Yeah. And uh, didn't leave a lot of land records and stuff, which wouldn't be very helpful. Died 1813. Um, was there ever, you know, um, before 1812? He was in. Yeah. 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 Uh, is, was there any official petitions or claims for losses? No, because uh, he didn't survive the war. No, no but his family or something. Zaya did, did I not send that to you? Uh -huh. Where she petitioned uh, on behalf of her orphan children. Uh -huh. And she received money. Yeah, but no information in that petition. Well, or it just it probably was more as military service than anything else. Yeah. 
I have to go back to that book, but I haven't found it. Yeah, I'm just wondering if it, 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 had, if it had more supporting ago, information. It, it, it could. I don't recall that it did. I thought yeah. I wrote down everything that it said. It's yeah. just a couple of lines. Could you go back to the unknown screen? What are you trying to find out here? Anything from John Wood, where he came from, who he met, who is he actually married, and they can remain named, and uh, where where they so came the first from. Two questions, first three questions, pretty much all, all basically <laughs> is American. Oh, don't, well, we don't know don't if they married in the U.S. or because I might have been Canadian. Uh, they might have married in Upper Canada. Uh, they might have both been from Connecticut or lived in Connecticut and, and married down there. There's no indication that any of the surviving seven kids in that land petition were born uh, in uh, America. They, they had to have born, been born by the dates in Upper Canada. Other than perhaps that first girl. Uh, she, yes, she other than her. is an unknown factor, other so than her. <coughs> all the rest of the kids were born in Canada, but they could have married in the States and then yeah. headed. But in the census, the, the boys turned 16 before the girls did. Well, the only Unless thing is, the uh, with, with your, your census, where are you there? 1803 census, there's one man, one woman, two boys, and one girl. That's in 1803. You have a son born in 1802 and a son born in 1803. Mm -hmm. So most likely she's got to be born in 1801 or 1800. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I'm basing it on. I'm okay. guessing she's probably the oldest simply because 1802 and 1803 are taken. <laughs> or it could have been twins. There is that possibility yes. too. But in generally speaking, I'm guessing she's first. So, I mean, she's still in the same neighborhood as the others. There's no doubt. So I just would like to be able to go back further in Connecticut. I would like to find documentation on its children. I'd like to know their names and follow their lines. That's what I like. so what's the origin of Keziah, the name? It's, it's a biblical one. Yeah. Uh, there were lots of Keziahs really? around. Yeah, I, I saw a couple of Keziahs in, in Quaker family. Mm -hmm. It's an unusual one, but it is out there. Yeah, it, is it? A, you know, like, is it just? Is it more common in Quaker? Is it more common? In I couldn't say that. No, 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 no I, I, I. It's don't, mixed. I don't know. It, it, I mean, it's worth looking into. But I found that this family was uh, they didn't follow the religion of the uh, of the times. Um, most of the time, either didn't have any. Not till late in the later 1800s did I see uh, a religion associated with this family. So I would think that. Okay. okay. So that that could be no religion, or it could be a, a, an uncommon yeah. religion, like Jewish or something like that, early Jewish. I uh, anything but yeah. the 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 yeah. Well. One of the suggestions I come up with was to work those early census returns to see if we can figure out any possibilities for those two adults, two women, two men, yeah. that type of thing. Because sometimes there'll be one guy in the census at one point and all of a sudden he disappears the next year and comes back the third year and maybe that two is actually him if, if he was related to them and just living with them or something like that. Did John have a brother? Yeah, or that type of thing too, or her brother. Yes. Either either way. Yes. Um, on that uh, one of the land records, I can't remember which one, whether it was the one you sent me or the other one, uh, there was a Daniel Crippen mm -hmm. who renounced a claim to lot 11 third concession that John Wood was applying for. Mm -hmm. Was that uh, being nice to him? Or was he related? Or was it just because he wanted something better? So, we're into our uh, fan principle here. Check family, check friends, friends, associates, 
Yeah. You ain't screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> some people say family association to neighbors, and some people say friends association. So that that is something to do too. Check everybody in those early years. See what you can find out. See uh, who else you witness land records, witness marriages, witness this, witness that, and witness the uh, land petitions, that type of thing. Because there was a couple people that were sureties or something like that in his land petitions. Yes. And, and they were neighbors and friends. Yeah. And you can also check and see if there's any other Connecticut Wood families that have the given names Jesse and Noah, because those two are kind of unusual names. The rest of the names, pretty darn common. Yeah. But Jesse and Noah, I would check Connecticut Wood families for those names. Actually, I wouldn't think we'll see why in a minute. <laughs> and check for other Connecticut families in early Hope Township to see if the fan principal holds up there where some associates came up with the Wood family at the same time. So there are those, that was the suggestions I gave. I got a, a, another one, and it's, it's, you have to get into the history of that town and read as to what migrations have and why they came. Yes. You know, what he is not associated. I can't find an association with him coming to that area in any way, shape, or form. And I've got all the, I, I buy those books and I keep them and I go back to them. And I haven't found a connection. They've married into the family. They know one another. Uh, uh, John's son, Jesse, was buried, was the, uh, after the daughter on the Hawkins farm was buried, he was the next one in the family cemetery, which became the uh, Canton uh, Cemetery. So they had deep connections with these people from the states, but I can't find, even with the history, and they don't appear on the list, they're just unremarkable. They're unassociated. <laughs> They're dissociated. The um, Northumberland and Durham uh, County Atlas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that plot, did it have his name on it? No. Or no. a descendant's no. name? No. No, because the, this was a uh, lot 11 and then lot 8 and lot 3 on the third concession are. Um, Leases. Leases. They're church leases. So they. Those records are at the leases of the Canada Company. I've got a, a copy of the of the lease that that Jesse you. did get, where he had to uh, pay uh, his bushels of wheat yearly. Um, I have I have a, a copy of. But no, it doesn't. Uh, David, a son of John, here's a couple of Well, there, there are somewhere. some lease records for uh, early land in the Robarts Library at the University of Toronto. But it might be Canada Company leases. Oh, well, this wasn't them. But um, I do. Or um, King's College leases. King's uh -huh. College had uh, a okay. certain number of blocks. But I I went to the municipal the, the uh, municipal records. That's yeah, it, and that's uh, and, and and it's I've, I've got copies of the um, of the uh, lease leases and lease the the transfers. They never actually. Any of them, any of them, they never ended up having this So, thank you, though. I I there was an article in Families and I could not possibly tell you the year, written by Ruth Burkholder when they discovered these leases at the university. Na Nancy, could you speak up a little, please? Okay. <laughs> at, at the UT Robarts Library. Ruth Burkholder was the one who discovered that set of records. I gotta say, 
15 or 20 years ago now. So it should be in the index of families. It should be. In okay. fact, I'm sure it was written up in families, this, okay. this discovery of, of the, these leases. Very vague memories here. I think I was at that talk, but I don't remember anything about it. <laughs> well, if, it's, if it's got then, if it's 15 years, then I would, I would have a copy of it. Probably would have my own. Well, <clears throat> yes. Can I ask, ask questions? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Please. No, this is all an open go back. thing for. You had a list up there of early, you call it early census, census right? Uh, census and assessment, yes. Tell me about what these are, where they're available, mm -hmm. and it's up how there. did you get them? The okay. source is yes. up there. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. The Newcastle District Census and Assessment Records, uh, they're on microfilm. Our branch actually owns a set, which you can see at the office. Um, well, of course, the archives in Ontario have them, and I don't know who else have them. They are for the Newcastle District, which basically was Durham, well, Durham County and North Hastings County, or Northumberland. and Northumberland County, so the, mostly along the Lake Shore. The Bowman so Bell Library had a set. Now they might have pushed them over to the archives, but it's only two blocks away. Wow! Well, <laughs> I haven't seen them. In either one. Okay, now the the history behind this, they are municipal records. They weren't done by the government of Ontario, or Canada, or whatever. They were municipal taken records done by townships. And um, those for old Ontario County don't seem to survive. Those for Durham County and Northumberland, we do have them on microfilm. They only microfilm every two years. They were there for every year. God knows where they are now with all our amalgamations, the originals. I have no idea. Probably thrown out. I think I think they <laughs> sent them back to the municipality, which was probably Cobra, because Cobra was the kind of was the, an administrative town for all that area. Um, yeah, I I uh, think I saw it at the Port Hope uh, Library. This is years ago that I got yeah. this, and then I went to Toronto and, and went through them all. Um, they were also indexed. Uh, <coughs> But Cobert Live, Cobert, we started to try and index these ten years ago. Yeah, at least. At least. Um, Bowmanville Library had microfilm copies, as you said, and but uh, again, ten years ago, Cobert Library had it. Uh -huh. Ontario Archives had them, yeah. and we had them. At the time, was in Oshawa Public Library, but now is in our office. Um, I think Peterborough might even have had them, but I'm not sure on the. Uh, so Steve, Brian Winter has a set for a okay, he's keeping for us. Did you ever get those back from him? Sure. See, all all the microfilm Brian had are come back. Yes. Have to come back. Yeah. All the newspapers and everything else are come back. In the office. Okay. Yeah, they, they are excellent. Along the lake usually starts about 1801 or so, some, somewhere around there. Uh, the back townships start later. Keep in mind these were assessment rules. Well, they, they were both sometimes. Kind of both, yeah. but they were assessing for taxes. Because yeah. I took out the ones where there was an assessment <coughs> in, the, in the same year. I took them out. I, I've doctored that a lot from, from what I had. Uh, but there were assessments where there was the, uh, a value assigned and the counting yeah. of the cows. X number of cows, X yeah, number of Yeah, exactly. Horses. And I took that out because that doesn't matter here. I took a lot out. Uh, but just, just to Convention. isolate what I, what I was looking for. Yeah. But the one thing you can sometimes get from the assessment records is the lot of concession. <laughs> so if you don't know where they were living or you want to follow them around, you can get a lot of concession numbers from those records. Sometimes, too, it varies. Some are just assessments, some are just census, and some are both. Yeah. Uh, Dan has some ancestors and their brothers and sisters uh, that are also mentioned in these assessment roles from from uh, Clark Township, and 
don't know if it's some hope. To, uh, anyway, over that way. <laughs> and um, we did something that had an unexpected uh, helpfulness. Uh, we drove around and we, we found them because they didn't own any land, but it does say lot and concession. So we drove around and we just looked at the places and tried to figure out because uh, Dan's relatives seemed to move around a lot. You know, they were probably pulling stumps for people that didn't want to do their own or whatever. Okay, so we drove by a house and there was an old guy sitting there on his back porch. So Dan is very nervy. I would never do this, but he st he stopped in and said, you know, we're you know looking for for the house where so-and-so lived, you know, 100 years ago or 150 years ago. And this fellow says, oh yeah, I'm sitting on it. <laughs> said, uh, apparently what happened was the, the old uh, the house that had been on across the road that wasn't there anymore, um, when, when they uh, wanted to build a new house, they, they uh, dragged the old cabin across the road and attached it to the back of another house as their back porch. Well, that was Floyd. <laughs> yes. And so he said, and, and I'm sure he said that the Searle family was connected to the DeLongs. And we'd never heard anything about any Searle family, so of course I wrote that down. So for the next 10 years, nothing interesting happened about that. But um, we later found out that one of Dan's, that, that particular ancestor's brother, had, who we thought had married Alice Thompson, it was her second marriage and her maiden name was Searle. So, but by the time we found her, she was, it was in some um, obituary in Michigan, and it was S-O-R-R-E-L. So nobody would have, I wouldn't have made the connection at all that that was her, yeah. and, and except for that fellow saying that. So sometimes, you know, uh, uh, the older people that are still in the neighborhood have had stuff passed down. I mean, that obviously that fellow wasn't alive when any of those things happened. Mm -hmm. But but he knew. Because mm -hmm. his family had been living on that farm for a long time. So sometimes just a little, you know, being being nosy and um, well, asking a lot of questions. <laughs> my husband and I did drive around. Yeah. Oh, both of us are like you. We need Dan. <laughs> 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 yeah. Everybody, yes, you are. <laughs> Well, we did find a relative in uh, in Welcome, and he liked old cars. So <laughs> that's, how we, that's how we got talking, and then we found out he's a relative. <laughs> okay, Debbie, yeah. just see little Daniel there, just for fun. I did a little hunt. Daniel Crippen? I I checked him out. He's uh -huh. actually in the 1797 list, uh -huh. but he's. Unmarried, so he's probably young. Yes. Oh no. But what? his father is David, and you happen to have a David what? in the children's names. He was born in Oh yeah, Connecticut. <gasps> he died in Hope Township in 1812. He was the son of Samuel Courier Crippen, and oh look at this. Oh. <laughs> Not only that, there's a Noah, a son Noah Crippen, and. Uh, David also had a, a brother Noah, so Noah was a Crippen family name. Hmm. So and there's a good a chance time. you should be hunting those guys down, maybe. Especially if you, you know, come up with them in when, DNA. When I read all that stuff about they were they were arguing over the land, he wanted it. No, you can't have. It. I, well, I well, I'm going to pay more money than than. Uh, uh, well, that part I didn't was. see. I didn't oh, see anything. Right, but I thought I don't like you, David. <laughs> Dan, Daniel Crippen, I don't like you. You seem like a money hungry guy. <laughs> wow. He just didn't want to be taken by his brother in law, maybe. <laughs> the trees and ancestry show David and Electa. Yeah. And, and I would start looking for Electa Wood as yeah. possible. Well, we've got Electa the daughter. And family from the Do you? So, but I mean, as an, a, the missing daughter yeah. could be named Electa. Okay. That would be that or Keziah. Okay. And so David and Electa supposedly had three sons. Eight. Eight. Or sorry, yeah. Eight sons. <laughs> Somehow I'm hitting here. There we go. Eight <laughs> sons, according to trees. But the 1799 township list by Elias Smith 
shows David Crippen with a wife and eight children, not including Daniel, who's listed separately. What does that tell me? That means there's nine kids. So there's one that those people on the internet do not have. And I went back to, David has two land, Upper Canada land petitions as well. One's 1797, one is, uh, I don't know, 1808 or something like that. One says he came to Canada, uh, I'm not sure, he gives a date, <coughs> with a wife and nine kids. So you're missing one kid. Guess who it just could be? It could be a missing daughter. So you just might want to follow up. I'm tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Get your cell phone out and take a picture of that. Uh, you're going to send that to me on email, aren't you? I can do that too. We've been emailing back and forth today. Yeah, okay. Very okay. Very the, to send you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you uh, want to email that, 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 that was for tonight. I'm going to do that. But you, you'll find that David actually made when you like to hop. Electa Hopkins mm -hmm. in Vermont area, mm -hmm. although they didn't have dates or anything. So you got a couple of different places to chase everybody around in. And uh, with any luck, you'll have to look for a will for David as well. They have the date, well, some of the family trees on Ancestry say 1812 he died, some of them say he died in 1813. So whether yeah. there's land so records or a will or something <laughs> for him out there, we'll have to check. And not in any of the indexes I have, but it could be a will in with the land records. Yeah. <laughs> you say you're okay. at the David Crippen or Daniel Crippen didn't show up on the township list? No, Daniel yeah. does. Um, where are we? Oh. Uh, well, Daniel Crippen was on the list, but he wasn't. He went, couldn't, wasn't part of the count of the eight children because he was listed separately. So, assuming that, that Daniel is David's uh, son, which Daniel was listed with no dependents or a wife, no wife, no dependents, so probably single, probably just turned 21 or something like that, and uh, which actually 1778, 1898. And I, yeah, he would have been about uh, 21 or so in 1799. Perfect, that works out. Exact. <laughs> so, so presumably I, the other eight children would, would have been uh, less than 18, uh, less you, than 21 years old. Uh, well, you would think that, but actually, uh, out of all these boys, I think Daniel was kind of in the middle. Oh. So the others were still like, sitting at home. Get rid of the kids? No, <laughs> <laughs> they were all at home. But well, he's probably working pretty good on the farm, yeah. especially clearing all the land. But uh, so the de David did have a wife and nine kids. Most people only know about eight of the kids, so there's a missing. And it's about time they had a girl if they had eight boys. So the odds are they're in your favor. <laughs> but. Yes. Uh, because you have a David in your family, a Noah in your family, and Keziah in your family, I start with them. <laughs> and, and especially with the Connecticut connection too, even better. Because they may have married up here, but they might have, you might have known it from down home. Yeah, that's right. This, this kind of narrows it down when they say, now I don't know how accurate, of course, it is. It's strictly off ancestry, but mm -hmm. they say Sharon, Litchfield, yeah. County. Okay. So. Thank you. And then, of course, they have his parents and her parents. And if you can prove it, you're off of London. Okay. Now, what we can do, I've got a bunch here from correspondence, but we'll take uh, Brick Wall's roof floor first. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get mine organized well enough. Um, I did research on this a number of years ago, and I'm thinking of starting up again. So it, it's a, only a brick wall because at the time I did it, um, there weren't so many things available. So I'm just basically looking for ideas of where to look first. Um, Dan's family, 
came up from New York and his ancestor Reuben DeLong was on the 19, 1819 census rolls um, in Clark Township and he came with the Decker family because his wife was a Decker. And that their oldest son, uh, James, um, we don't know if he was with them at the time or whether he came later uh, because his, his, his wife is an American and her name was Lucinda Clark. So Lucinda Clark and James uh, came and they lived in various farms. They never owned any land. They never got in the newspaper. As far as I could tell, they weren't in jail or anything. Um, but, uh, I found them in the assessment rolls and um, I found them when a, their, a couple of the, their children got married so they were listed as the parents. You know, so, um, and, and so they, there are not very many records about them, but we know they were here. And their last child that I've been able to find was, was born in 1849. And, um, and then I didn't find anything until um, about 1860 when James is in Sanilac County, Michigan and has a different wife and a couple more kids. So I was wondering what happened to Lucinda? Um, I've, I have been in contact with people um, from actually one descendant of that family who, who only knew that, um, yeah, he was married before uh, in Canada, and that's all they knew. And um, I uh, found quite a few obituaries of people that were related to him because he went down there because it's several of his brothers and sisters went down there too. Uh, but none of them mention him or there's no gravestone that, that, that is on the internet anyway. I haven't gone down to look, okay. Um, but uh, he also had with him um, a, a child that wasn't his son called James Clark. And I found some information on that find a grave information uh, website about him. And it says he's a, he was adopted and um, by uh, James and his new wife Mary um, and that he was from Canada. So that's another Clark. Also uh, one of his children, Reuben, Dan's ancestor, also married an uh, Electa Clark <laughs> and I don't, I haven't been able to find any connection between them. So there's a lot of Clarks around here, but they don't, the Clarks don't seem to be related to each other. And um, even though they're from Clark Township. <laughs> so I'm just wondering, I have, I've checked uh, many sources to find information about Luc Lucinda and where she might have died. Um, I'm presuming it's more likely she died here and that that's why he left all his children, because none of his children uh, from, from Lucinda left, they all stayed here and married and grew up here, but he just left. So I, I'm thinking it's more likely that Lucinda died in Ontario. Um, but I haven't been able to find anything, you know, of course I've checked the cemetery records and uh, I've, I've uh, checked the, the as many newspaper obituaries and things as I can find, but they're a little scarce in this area, except for the Bowmanville Statesman. <laughs> you know, um, I've, uh, I, I've looked for wills at the archives, but it's all this happened before census, so uh, he was, uh, actually, no, that's not totally true. I did find him listed uh, in a couple of census before that, but it was, just said lot in concession. And it was, uh, anyway, I, I would like to know where I might look to find her death and burial um, between about 1950 and 1960, or 1850 and 1860. Um, I've checked at the Trent University archives. They had some church records there, and there was nothing that I found there. So they didn't seem to belong to any particular church. Their children were just buried in, or uh, married in their spouse's church or um, whatever was the nearest church or something. So there was no, 
they don't have any clues there. So I don't think they were very religious. Dorothy Brown indexed a whole bunch of Clark records, census and assessment. I don't know if it was just strictly assessment or if there were census and assessment yes. records for Clark. I believe we'll say 1850 to 1900. And I think they went to one of the museums down there, like the index. It would be worth checking that, as we showed in the other, if you can, if they do have some census records, you might get a few where he's there with a wife, and then all of a sudden there is no wife listed, and then are you talking the about the assessment rolls? That type of thing, yes. But they were they, they not were the ones that are on microfilm. Not the not those ones that we we own. No, we don't own these. So things. they might be at the Clark Township Museum. Maybe? They might be at Clark Township Museum because Dorothy Brown actually did them, and. Uh, at one point, I thought we were going to get a copy, but we didn't. Oh. So, <laughs> oh. Partly because I never got down to see her. Okay. So I would check that and see that, what they. That got. might narrow the date down. It might narrow the date down if, yeah. if he's shown with a woman there up to a certain point and then she disappears. I mean, if you, if it's possible, it could be before 1850. The record, the microfilm we have, would help you on that. Yes. Because our records go up to 1850 for Clark. Well, the, the assessment rolls, I've, che I've looked through them pretty thoroughly, so I uh, did, find, did find him on several right. of them, but of course the they way. don't say anything, they just say James and eight people or three people or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So well, they, well, there is an 1850 census and an 1848 census. Yes, and I've looked, I've checked. And, I've checked and those them. ones would tell you if they had a wife or not. Yes. They wouldn't give her name or anything, but well, it would give right. you those records. So. Yes, I don't know specifically. I, I don't think I found him there. I did find his I did find his brother Pellick, although they were calling him Felix, but I figured out it had to be him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. One of the thing I always think of is that people today are the same as people back then often. You're presuming she died. Yes. Uh, the fact well, that sort of uh, he took off their <laughs> family, none of the family children fall them down. Yes. Um, I would look uh, going forward to see uh, whether she appears in a census living with anybody else or, or as well, a widow. Or I've, as a widow. I've, I've checked I've checked all the censuses for for uh, all those people that I could know the names of. <laughs> going on yes. to, into the yes, future quite into, a bit. into the future I checked them for other reasons and did find a number of mother-in-laws you know things like that but um uh but not not anyone called lucinda and there, you might just want to go through the census returns say 1861 or so yes. any lucinda and track her back because if he's gone she's going to say he's dead and she might have remarried too yeah. so there is that possibility yeah and you might also go by a middle name if she has one yes yeah. Well, <laughs> if she stayed in the same area, she probably wouldn't change too much that way. But if she moved away, then they couldn't track her. Yeah, and I would look into um, you know bigger cities that somewhere that a, a single la lady might have moved as a domestic or mm -hmm. uh, part like that. Yeah, <laughs> she yeah. would have been sixty uh, or something. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> well, but they she might more likely to move into, into the oldest daughters. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, and and um, so there, it's the family. I kind of wonder if he was maybe a little disreputable, even though we didn't find him in the jail records because he didn't seem to stay long in one place. The family kept moving around, and sometimes he, his children would be over with the uncles, you know, and that sort of thing, and he'd come and he'd go, and um, but. Anyway. Not adopted child is a bit of a. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, looking uh, at the time periods and all that, that could have had something to do with him yes. <laughs> leaving town. Except he's got the wrong last name. Well, yes, the thing is, though, so his wife's maiden name was Clark, and he had a daughter-in-law named Clark. It could have been, uh, it could have been um, uh, a cousin or like a nephew or or something, somebody <laughs> from the wife's side of the family, yeah. you know, or the daughter-in-law side of the family. Yeah. Certainly so, worth and, and following I, up. And I haven't tried to find that out 
yeah. right? Just do research on that child and see yeah. if you can find anything good in that child. I mean, the boy that went down to Senelac with him. Yeah, yeah. because that, <laughs> yes. that to me, that, mm -hmm. that's when his own children never went down, mm -hmm. why did uh, another child go down? And that's... Oh, you're, yes. you're thinking there's a scandal there. I'm yeah. thinking there's a scandal well, there. And <laughs> somebody, somebody got out of Dodge, brought the kid with him, and... Yeah. Well, I did think of that at the time, but um, it wasn't so easy to try to find out then. Another yeah. thing that, uh, that Dan and I did was have a number of family reunions, and we invited lots of people from Michigan who came up, um, and uh, we compared family trees and things like that. But it turned out that most of them were from another branch of the family that that um, came from Prince Edward County. So they're related, but not closely enough that they could help you with this problem. <laughs> I would really look for her in the future. You know, that, that yes. She was still alive when he, he took off. Yes. Well, and if, if she had died, you would think there was a possibility some of the kids might fall down. Yeah. And if he was still alive and if there was some sort of... Bad feelings? Yeah. Yes. And, with, and especially with one kid going down, a young kid going, it just, mm -hmm. the logic of it makes you wonder. Yes. Yeah, but he didn't t take off into nowhere, though. He did go to where he's, he yeah. had a brother and a sister, a couple of various people yeah. that were cousins and things had gone because af after this area Michigan was the next area opening and a lot of people from here went there and, uh, and after all he was an American mm -hmm. so <laughs> he was born in Herkimer County what year uh, uh, well I don't know exactly but I know that by 1960 he was down there and had another wife and a couple of his own kids plus this Clark 1860 yeah, he was there, uh, but but because um, that's there was a census then, right? Yeah, 1860. Yeah, an 1860 U.S. census. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but uh, I haven't been able to find uh, any grave kind of information about this death because there's too darn many James DeLongs. Yeah, DeLong is generally a good name to research because it's not so rare that you get frustrated yet find anything and it's it's not like Smith and, and uh, you know where Brown where you can't sort them out but this this fellow is a loser. So yeah. <laughs> John? In those days did people disappear to a sanatorium or an asylum or something and they thought uh, they wouldn't show up back home? Well that's true if she, if she had Alzheimer's or something like that uh, although she might have been a little young for that there's so a lot of TV, a lot of consumption. That's true. But then you would think that we would find find a grave. A grace. Well, there's a lot of people with no grace, so especially since the family had no money. But yeah. they and they didn't have any and they didn't have any land to bury the person on the land. There was an epidemic like that in Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you know, the kids being out of the house could be she was sick for a while. Yeah. Well, you can check Michael, I think it's Michael Stevenson's website, yeah. and he has some asylum type records on it, and he's, I should say, an index to the asylum Okay, so I, that, that's something I haven't looked at. Michael, you Michael might, she Stevens. might have uh, somebody on there. Yeah, yeah but he was he's a John Brown. <laughs> 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 from your location. Yeah. Stevens with a PH or anything? I believe it's PH, yes. <laughs> and there were asylums back then? Yeah. yeah. Oh. They just threw everybody into my thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and where there weren't asylums, they used the jail. Yeah. Mm. So a lot of, a, a lot of, like today, we think of an asylum as, as for, for people all that were with mental problems, but being senile is a mental problem. <laughs> so, put a variety of Okay, well, thank you. All right. Well, give me some ideas. Yes. You mentioned an index. Well, the Michael Stevenson one? Yeah. He's made some indexes that he's posted online to uh, some of the asylum directors. Oh, earlier so, yeah. in your talk. Oh, Dorothy. Oh, Dorothy, Dorothy Brown. Dorothy Brown. Yes. That was to uh, 
Well, assessment records for sure. I'm not sure if there were any census records in with that or not, because I, I never did see them. That's oh. that was for Clark? That was Dorothy Brown for Clark was Township. an early yes. member of our branch um, and uh, a leading light of the East Durham Historical Society, was it called? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And so her work she did could very well have ended up in, in Clark County. Well, or what about or Dorothy's, Dorothy's house? Yeah. I would try the okay. museum first. The museum rings a bell. Yeah. Okay. What's Dorothy's house? Well, it's it's uh, when you're talking talking about East Durham, it's it's a, a museum in Garden Hill. Oh, they meet there. I used to meet there. Um, they, don't they have a collection of Bibles, as I recall. Mm -hmm. They're dolls. They're dolls. <laughs> they, they could have had anything, I guess. But it, it is a little... It's a little museum that's... Historical type set up. Yeah, it's so only Garden open. Hill would be home township, was it? Is it? Uh, it, it I don't think East, no. yes. East Hope, anyway. Yes, yes, it is. It's directly it's north of Welcome. Yes, I mean, yes, it is. It's north yeah. of Welcome, you get Garden Hill. Yeah, yeah cause, because it's, pa Durham it's past Valley, the... But yeah. We didn't get, them in Durham, didn't get it in Durham region. Yeah. So we don't we don't actually cover Hope Township, so I'm not that familiar with the record. So that would be not Durham then. Not Durham region. Yeah, but would it be Durham? But it, it was, was Durham, Durham, County. Durham County. That's what I was thinking. It'd be the County. east part of Durham Old, County. Yeah, Old Durham County. Quite often combined with the county in our summer. Yeah. Quite often combined uh, politically and administratively. I'm not sure what they've got down there now. I know they don't have, really don't have hours at the museum anymore. Oh. You have to make an appointment through the Bowenville facility. Hopefully oh, that'll change. We're working on it. Good. <laughs> From the theories, from the yeah, I've got a bunch of them. All. Oh, yeah. So, but I'll I figure we take the. Okay. I think we should. I think it. we should have a quick break. Okay. Maybe about uh, ten minutes. About nine fifteen. I might just need five minutes. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Stretch. Uh, let's have a stretch. <laughs> no, we help. Well, we listen to it. I'm not sure we helped you all that much. Well, I've got a couple, a couple of ideas. ideas, hopefully. Uh, anyone else want to ask a question about a problem they're having doing their research? It's that late at night, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, um, Steve's going to do one more there. And the only reason he's doing is I can see Tevil. <laughs> that, that was quite, this is a while back. This yeah, this is a while back. Yeah. 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 Last, last spring, but uh, yeah, uh, just you know, someone was looking to f match maps, the current maps to old maps. Basically, is what they were hoping to do to find the location of their ancestor. The suggestion for that one was the early historical atlas collection online at McGill University. <coughs> Quite often, you can take the map that's there, or most a lot of libraries have county analysis as well and uh, kind of superimpose or compare it with a current map and quite often you can still figure out where you are on a lot of those maps so but your your trouble yeah is this the same the mh yeah, yeah. So it's not it's not a, it's a cousin it's a cousin yeah actually matthew is a uh great uncle i guess you'd call him He's a brother to my grandfather. Well, I know your grandfather's lot was right next door to my great great grandfather's lot, Archibald Vince. Uh huh. And you can't get, it's in the middle of the Ganaraska Forest. That's now. right. You can't get to it. That's right. <laughs> Tell no, us about no. it. Back, actually, that's the original tip. Yeah, the original tip. Uh -huh. yeah. 
But concession eight, they should be able to get the map. Oh yeah, the concession so eight clear. Yeah, I have, I have actually, I have a map that's taken out of the. It's, uh, actually, I guess the Northumberland area historical map. Uh, those books. Yeah. yeah that's what. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 It's, it's and we've there. got one marked with the devil yeah. name on it there. And yeah. And from he went from there to the Maynard farm, which is a little further down, and we know uh, on possession eight. eight and that's where that's where he settled. And my guy went to Manitoba. <laughs> and you know a newer edition of that um, county atlas that came out maybe a few years ago in the Durham Northumberland and it was added content in it. Uh, Bowmanville Museum I think has two or three left. I, I bought one just recently. And uh, does it it's have a table? Uh, I, I never looked at it that close. <laughs> <laughs> it was a new book. I think the same maps, but it has additional information. Yes, yeah, yeah. same uh, maps. So, so, what kind of additional information um, did, you, did you have a chance to check it out? It looked to me uh, uh, like it had some int additional submitted information that people have submitted. Uh, was that the one you got at the museum when I met you that day? Yes, yeah, I was going the in big, The big green. Okay. No, no, it was, it was um, brown this time. Green was last time. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, I the last time. <laughs> yeah, I've got that one. But I, I have a collection of them. I saw this. The main thing. are running a store next door. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, but just before we moved to Bowmanville. Uh, uh, Mrs. Maynard ran the store. Was, next was he in the uh, Kirby area? That's the only name, I've, well, only time I've ever heard yeah, of Maynard. Because they were on concession eight. Actually, the, there's several farms there already still owned by the Maynards by going by the mailboxes outside yeah. the farms. Yeah. Interesting. Another map to look up if you want to go a little earlier is the 1861, approximately, Tremaine's map. And they are now online as well. Oh, are they online? Are they uh, are you in the last, thing for what what new, what last year's newsletters will have an address in there. I haven't got them. <laughs> <They're online. laughs> Good thing. There's, there's another one, someone looking for the death record of Elizabeth Phelps Pinkham in, in the 1880s. She doesn't appear to have been registered, even though by that time most of them were. She just got unlucky. We could not find the death record for her or for her parents, <coughs> which was not going to help. But we did find uh, a newspaper article about the death. So we could narrow it down for her. And unfortunately, I put my little laser thing away. Is it got a laser thing too? <coughs> it's, it's lighter Fainter? than yours, right. yeah. We did find it in the newspaper index for dirt for uh, Bowmanville. Think of this is C of Orno, age 71 years, died. And the <laughs> September 1883, when she died, or when it was printed, so presumably she desired, died that month. So we got part of the information for this lady, but we could not to follow it up with exact information. So we, we did suggest that she might want to check the abstract book for Clark Township to see if there was any wills for comfort <coughs> or Elizabeth listed, comfort was a husband. And because uh, wills might have some information about when people died. And also if there was any land records, if they still owned any at the time of her death, you might get a date of death from the land records. So that was our suggestion for this lady um, for the missing record. It, it should have been in the registration, but simple registration, but it wasn't. So. Yeah, sometimes things are going to get missed depending on how much you go with your, your ancestors like the government, I guess. <laughs> I have one ancestor, same situation. She died in 1883. And I have a newspaper clipping, very similar. I don't know the date, I know the month and the year. Need a Bible. Didn't I need a Bible. You got that? Need the Bible records. I think we'll, I think we'll uh, Okay. We'll move on to. Did you have any correspondence, uh, Sheila? Did you want to say anything about? Uh, um, <laughs> and I'll bring up. <laughs> 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 
Super swinging. Super swinging. So for December, um, eight dollars deposits. Our withdrawals five hundred and seventy-three dollars and eighty-two cents. So the balance of our current account is three thousand six hundred and eleven dollars and fifty cents. I presume we're waiting here for our first uh, money from our. Uh, um, Okay, registration's open for the OGS conference in June. Go on the OGS website and sign up. I'm sure it's going to be a great time. Uh, they have announced the uh, um, speaker from Friday night from the opening ceremonies. It's going to be a professor, Jonathan Vance, focusing on uh, nation builders you've never heard of. <laughs> Talking about the life and influence of two individuals who are almost unknown today, but apparently were quite involved in the formation of Canada. Uh, I have printed off a few copies here at the front of the upcoming Toronto branch education sessions they're doing. They're doing uh, genetic genealogy was so popular they put in another set on Saturday mornings in January. So uh, grab one of those pieces of paper if you are interested in going in. I think one's at the Ontario Archives and the other ones are at Toronto Reference Toronto Library. Reference Library. Uh, and this is just a repeat of one we did last month that the Irish Palatine Special Interest Group is going to do a coach tour in September. I am doing DNA Basics at our next meeting and in March 6th. Barbara, Bishop and Lucy? Yes. Have you done, your, done it yet for the <laughs> Clarington Museum? No. That on the, in the first week of February. Okay. <laughs> That's why I couldn't do it. <laughs> we were talking to him about doing it for Black History Month, but I think March the 6th is probably close enough. He can make his mistakes before he comes to us, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> it will be good. And the special interest group DNA one is January 17th this month. And I'm going to do a three slide short presentation here for you. I was very interested in this little tidbit I found in the December issue of Family Tree Magazine out of the States. The representative church body library in Dublin is the official archives for the Church of Ireland. And they created a downloadable PDF called the Irish Parish registers of uh, Ireland, Church of Ireland. Uh, this was the article um, in the Family Tree magazine. This is what the uh, title page looks like when you download the PDF. And this is a sample of um, what it looks like when you are using it. It lists the parish here. It's got all this lovely color coding. It gives you links to finding aids over there. If they can combine with another parish, it says, you know, C, whatever that name of that parish is. Uh, it makes notes of what's still held locally and what's at uh, the Public Record Office of Ireland and the Public Record Office of Northern Ireland. And it notes any record losses, like the ones blown up in 1922. And if there's any copies or online indexes, it's marked in the comment column as well. So that's a very short presentation. Where, where, where is it? Uh, 
There's your website. And you, when you go to that website, there's a spot or a button or a title or something there. I've actually forgotten. And it's called List of Parish Registers. You click on that and you get to the downloadable copy. And if you really want this, I'll pause for two seconds while you take a photo with your digital camera. Mm -hmm. Or your cell phone, <laughs> which John's doing at the back. Yes. And that's it. Unless by overwhelming acclamation you want Steve to keep going <laughs> with his examples. But otherwise that's uh, that is our meeting for January. So don't forget to come out in February. I'm actually giving this talk uh, next Tuesday at the Ajax Public Library in the afternoon. They have a little um, interest group that they are running out of the library for genealogy. And they requested a talk on DNA. You're going to make your mistakes there for hoping to get across. <laughs> well, actually, no, I made my mistakes already at the, at the Newcastle Historical Society. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and yeah, I know I was there. I the talk. <laughs> <laughs> so we shouldn't go there because we're going to yeah. hear you next month. We're going to hear it in February here, so you don't need to go to the Ajax one. But I, I am testing out the new event on them. Anyway. Are you saying that your talk keeps evolving? It sure does. <laughs> Especially when you find out when I gave the talk, Ancestry's database was 3 million people in their DNA database. Now it's six million plus. Oh, and I heard some figure like 1.5 million kits they sold over the holiday. <laughs> you can't be surprised. You know, it is really boom. Oh. <laughs> All right, got one for Christmas. You got one for Christmas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I managed nine of them now. Just submitted the ninth for my husband's aunt who is 90 years old. Got her for Christmas. <laughs> Phoned her up and said, We're coming to dinner. <laughs> She'd already invited Save us. Save your spit. <laughs> Save your spit. <laughs> um, no, she was very gracious about the whole thing, so that, that's really good. Um, uh, but I'm very happy to have Trimble DNA under control. <laughs> Along with my brown DNA and my Wilkins DNA <laughs> and my Gould DNA. So yes, do more on my side of the family than I do on his. <laughs> okay.